All right. Uh, about ready to make this bushing now. Change the camera angle. And what you can see here, right here, is a little bit of a setback. It's turned away uh, because there was a different kind of a gear on here. And I'll grab it and show you. Different kind of a gear. It was this thing here, which is a slide gear. And it's supposed to mesh in there, make go one way, make go the other way. And this part right here fit over the shaft. And there was a, uh, just a lousy pin right there. I guess a shear pin. I guess something happened. It would break that pin uh, to drive it. And what I'm going to do is make a sleeve to go over this shaft here. And I need to make it so it's a, uh, I want to make it two inches. It should be two inches long. And whatever the diameter, this is a five eighths diameter. And then whatever this diameter is, which is. Uh, about one inch. Now this is the thing I made oh, ten years ago to adapt this up. There's something wrong with it. This thing here, you can see it's get it here. It's worn. It's wear here. That's from the from the gears from the uh, needle bearing needle bearing. So. I'm gonna mic that up, and make sure what that is. Make it about two inches long, whatever this OD is, of the shaft, which is five eighths. I'll check it down there to make sure. And then I'm gonna put that in here and put this drive gear over this and see how it mates up with the gear that's in there. You know, it can't be too tight, it's gotta be just a little bit out. So I'll, I'll keep machining the face of that back until it gets to be the two gears get to mesh together and shim it whatever I need to do. And then once that's done, and I'm sure that it's going to fit, I'll slide that off and um, harden it. Because I want it to be hard. Because you see, this is what happened to this. It wore out. So I want to harden it up and then polish it, I guess, and put it back in there. And I'll probably lock tight it on because in case i got to get it off, I can heat it and pull it off. I, I can't, there's no way you're going to be able to press it off because it's going to be the same diameter OD of this, I believe. So... Uh, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go on the lathe. I'm going to make that part. And then from that point, you're going to see me harden it and put it back together. And then me start measuring where I have to cut this, make some measurements, and put this in the lathe, just a screw. And turn that down, cut it down, whatever, cut this off. I'm probably going to wind up using a steady rest here, chuck about here, and so I get the an average of this piece because if you try to chuck it here what's going to happen is it's going to on the other end so we don't want that we want it to be pretty true now we have in the past when i worked at de laval we made uh, lead screws this big around and what we had to do was um indicate the other end with an indicator on the tail stock on the end of on the outside end of the headstock where the spindle goes through we had to put an indicator there and move it around and work both of them together so to get it running true. In one instance this, we had a screw that was so long that we had our lathes in our department were headstock to tailstock, headstock to tailstock, almost in line with each other, one down the road. And the next lathe was probably eight feet away. And then there's another lathe after that eight feet away. They were all monarchs. And so what we did is we moved the lathe, had the no rights move the lathe, and so it was pretty much in line with this one, with the one I was running, and we put a steady rest on the other machine, so just to kind of so that thing wasn't whipping around out there. And then I worked on it and cut the threads, do whatever I had to do to make it work. And that was an interesting job. But that, this is the kind of work we used to do. And it was, I think that was a triple lead screw. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, Mr. Pete covered uh, double lead screws, uh, a, a triple lead. It doesn't matter as long as you have the same starting point. And the lathe that we had was an American lathe. The one I ran was an American pace setter. And it had marks, uh, four marks, two marks, of course, and three marks around the, the, the tailstock end, or the end of, outside end of the, where the um, spindle came through. There was marks there, and you would mark the, the um, uh, shaft, disengage the, the uh, uh, bull gear, turn it until it re-engaged again, and then that was your start of your other thread. So you can do it that way too. Mr. Pete did it by putting it against the jaw of the chuck 
There's a lot of different ways to do it. That, that's one of the ways. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go over in a lathe. In fact, I'm going to use now, let me just show you what I'm going to use. I'll be right back. I'll be right back over here now. And I got this inch and a quarter piece of drill rod that I got from McMaster Car. And that's big enough. It's, you know, turn it down two inches, drill it, bore it, probably ream it, be good enough, and slide it on there. And uh, I'm probably using a one size over reaver, 1,000 over, so it slides on here and then I can lock tighten it. Now, the one drawback about lock tightening it is that it might be slightly eccentric to this screw here on this part. But it doesn't matter that much because it's just a, a lead screw to move the table in and out. What matters is in the middle and how that is in relationship to the ways. Oh, it could be a little bit off. I don't want to be too far off, but that, that'll work. And I'm going to put this over in a cutoff saw over here, cut a chunk off. Probably, uh, I might I might even do that. Uh, I might just do it and cut it off or whatever. But uh, anyway, that's just a normal operation. You don't need to watch me do that. Uh, you can watch other people do it. It's a routine job. So I'm going to go work on that, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you what I did, and then we're going to harden it up and move on. Drilling it out with a 1930 second drill, which is one thirty second under five eighths to finish size. You might think that's a little fast, but it isn't. We go easy. Well, I'll smoke. Try to set the foot alarm off. Drill nice. You don't want to work hard in it because this is drill rod. It will work hard on you. So. Then what I'm going to do is bore it out for an inch, half an inch, a half an inch to an inch, three quarters maybe, and uh, to the size, and then the reamer will follow that. You just don't want to put the reamer in without boring it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Now that's pretty hot, so. I'm going to set up the boring bar and let that cool off.
that will expand and give you a different size. It's all the way through now. I got a whole length of the bar if I can. Even slow. Here the chips. That's one thing nice about a turret lathe. You have the the turret. This you don't have to do all this cranking. Just pull it in and out. Tubal cane like my can. Appreciate it very much, Mr. Pete. Okay. That's it, all the way through. Now, now we're going to turn it. I'm going to go to a different type of a tool. Catch it with the end of the brush. Alright, uh, got done making a bushing, that was yesterday actually, and I always got to remember to wear the same color shirt, I got a lot of red ones, but um, alright, what I did, did done, do, did, is, let me see if I can do it now, I got to get it out of here somehow. Got to get the bushing in there, stuck in there, the weight off it I guess. Somehow, I use a, a little modification, a little bit of change of change of plan here. I made it in two pieces, and I'll tell you why I did that in a minute. Let me get it out of here. Okay, made it in two pieces. Okay, this one, I don't have to lock tight this on there. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to slide it on there, and it butts up against this shoulder. Now the shoulder here, I'll get a close-up of it in a minute. Put that on a close-up. That would have normally been way out there, but because of that fancy-dancy drive bicycle loop gearbox, 
they had to cut it back. So I just needed this bushing. Now this bushing, just, just the spacer really. So that goes in there like that. And then this piece now is going to be the harden, the piece we're going to harden. But before I do that, I got to put it in here and put the gear on and get the clearance to the, there's a bevel gear, get the clearance between this and the bevel gear that's in there. So I got to start out, say 10, say 15 thousandths, face off 15 thousandths, try it, try something, just keep trying. So you just get a little bit of backlash and that's good. You don't want it to bind. And then once that's done, then, uh, and I can't get it out again, then we'll be good to go to harden it. And I just thought that was a better idea because now I can just let this float in there. It'll ride on the needle bearings. And if this goes gets worn, I can just replace this. Just pull it out and replace it. And that thing could just float on there. Nothing needs to be locked tight. So uh, we're going to do that next and get this completed, get this hardened, and show you how to do that. And then the next thing, uh, we're going to put the gear on and take this apart and put the gear on after I get it to where I want it to be. And we're going to cut this, face it cut this off, thread it, and keyways. Now, just a quickie on a keyway. The, the original keyways, where are they? The original keys, um, yeah, here they are. The original key is a little bigger than the key I have. I got a whole box of these, so I'm gonna use these, but they're the same thickness that I'll show you here up close. The same, same thickness but, of course, this one's almost twice as big. I mean, you see the difference in them there. So, I'm going to use them. It'll work. Uh, the thing I'll do is I'll put two. Instead of one, I'll put two on there. And one for the handle is enough. And I've got the cutter for it. Because this is something I use on another job. I've got the cutter for it. So, I'm going to set up to do that. And that'll work. It'll do, do the job I need it to do. And uh, we'll move on. We'll get the keyways cut, get everything together, and it's ready to go on when I get, I still haven't got the, the um, lubricator parts. I got some of them. Now here's, just as a side note, let's talk about ordering things from China. You know, I keep preaching about the Americans, American way, this and that. Well, the parts are every bit as good as the ones you get from China. They probably are from China. The ones you order from the United States, they probably are made in China. However, they're three and four times the cost because they mark them up. Now, the drawback is when you order them from China, you got to wait a year and a day. I guess they got to go through customs or whatever they got to do. They take longer to get, so that's the drawback. The positive is you save money. So if you're not worrying about getting it right away, then that's fine. Um, so when they come in, we're going to continue with that. But at least I'll be ready with the table. That'll be done. I'll get the lubricator on. That'll be done. Then... The next phase is to put the table on, to tear it on, and then we got to remove the head, and i got to work on the head and make sure everything's good in there before I put it up and make sure the bearings are good. I might decide to rebuild the whole head, uh, bearings, everything done, complete new. So it's all new. And uh, so now I'm going to go over to lathe and face off a little bit off of this and uh, keep trying it, trial and error until I get it the way I want it to be, and then we're going to harden it.